There are many different ways you can go about formatting your chart, and we already covered some of them, but since this is all about formatting it, we'll start with the basics and then work ourselves up to more advanced features or options. So first off, let's talk about chart styles. By selecting your chart, if you want to find out what other styles are available, then go ahead and either click on the paintbrush, and you can see you've got a list of styles and the color for the styles, so you can select colors, let's go back to styles, or you can come up here and click on the design tab and there's the chart styles there as well and also the colors. So first off the styles if you want a preview of it just go ahead and hover over it. You can see down below in the spreadsheet the preview of that style. You can see in the pop-up below my selection here is style 5. Go ahead and click on it if you want to accept it. And then as far as the colors you can either come down here if it's still open and click on it color or you can come up here and click on change colors and you can see the default is selected here. It's colorful palette 1 as opposed to colorful palette 2. The difference being is that the first column in the column chart is going to be blue. This palette is going to be, the second column is going to be green. Then if I choose that one, the first column is going to be red, and then the second column is going to be purple. Ooh, I like that one. Let's select that one. And then if this is still open, you can go ahead and hover over these to get a preview. And then if you don't like the colors here, you see where it says, how do I change these colors? When you hover over it, it gives you a pop-up and it says you can go ahead and change the theme colors. You can customize that, which I talk about in another training video. But in short, if you want to choose another theme color than what you see here or customize one, then just come up here and click on the Page Layout tab, go to the Themes group, and there it is, Colors. Click on it, and as you hover over any one of these, it updates the colors through the entire workbook with that theme. Or you can come down here and click on Customize Colors and create your own custom theme colors. Let's go ahead and click off and leave that for another training video and click off of that to get rid of it. And then next, if you want to go ahead and change the chart layout and see what other chart layout options are available because maybe there's a better one than what the default is here. With the chart selected, come back up here, click on the design tab, go to the chart layouts group, there it is, quick layout. Click on it and you can hover over it to get a preview of it. Down below on the chart there, you can see the name of its layout 1. And that's okay. Legends over to the right. Let's take a look at layout 5. Ooh, that's kind of kooky. It's got the legend to the left, and then the numbers displayed below the months where the columns are. All right, let's select that. That's okay by me. And speaking of the legend here, you got it over to the left-hand side, but if you want to change that up or choose a different layout that doesn't have it, or you want to get rid of it or add to it, then you can come over here and click on the plus sign to open up the chart elements. And there it is, legend. Hover over it, and it adds it over to the right. So now you have what could be considered as two legends. Because you have the colors down here assigned to the MP3s and books, but when you hover over it, it adds it over to the right by default. And if you want more options, go down to the second level by clicking on the triangle. And you can see a preview of it when you go to right, top, or left, or select more options. And let me go ahead and scroll over. When you select more options, it automatically adds it. And then you can go ahead and say, well, let's put the legend up at the top. And then when you're done, you can close out of it. Or if you want to go ahead and format the legend, you got the paint bucket, which you can go ahead and add some color to the legend if you want to fill it in. Oh, can't see it. So maybe with that color, I want to make it more transparent. There we go. Eh, not too bad. You can do gradient fill. And speaking of the gradients down below, it's going from the color white over to blue, and we actually have some extra stops here. And so the purpose of this, let me go ahead and select the stops and delete them. So we just look at two stops, the beginning and the end. So it starts with the color white and goes all the way up to the color blue. So the way that it's working in the legend here is that it's going from blue all the way up to white. And so if we don't like the direction of going from blue bottom to white top, then go ahead and come over here and change the direction and say maybe that you want it from, you can see this one, linear up where it's blue top, white bottom. You can see it there. Also, you can add additional gradient stops. So if you want it to go from white to one color and then from that color to another color, go ahead and click Add. And with it selected, go ahead and click on the color option. Maybe you want to go to orange first. Okay, that's not looking too good. But nonetheless, you can see my point here. So it's going from white to orange, then from orange to blue. Now, if you don't want it to transition to orange too quickly, then go ahead and click and drag it over to the right so it's a longer transition before it actually gets to it, and then from a short transition to orange to blue. And like I said, you can always, if you don't like it, select it and then remove it. 
Now you can do that not only for the legend, which by the way, if you don't like the legend, you can either go ahead and uncheck it by clicking on the chart elements and unchecking it there, or just with it selected, hit the delete key on the keyboard and gets rid of it. Also unchecks it here. Let's go ahead and close out of the task pane, which by the way, if you want to bring up the task pane to get more formatting options as it were, and you don't want to go through all the steps to get to the third level, you know, to go down to more options, then you can either double click really fast on one of the items within the chart, like the chart title, double click on the border, it brings up the task pane, or you can go ahead and just simply right click, and you want to go to format, that's either format chart title, or right click, and go to format data series, and so when it comes to formatting data series, by the way, it selects all the books. And so instead of formatting and setting a style for all the columns, if I just want to change the style for one of the columns, then go ahead and select one of the columns in the data series. So it selects all of them. Then you can come over here. Well, let me click off. And let me go ahead and select it again. So now we got everything selected. But I removed the pop-up that was in my way. Then come over here to the task pane, the format data series. And you've got your, your series options, which is the primary and secondary access. We'll leave that alone and keep it simple. Other options include the effects, shadow glow, soft edges, which, by the way, you can find up here on the ribbon, the related contextual format tab for shape effects, shadow glow, soft edges, and so forth. But let me go over to the fill and say that we want a solid fill. Default color is blue. You can, of course, go ahead and change that, maybe make it orange and maybe not so harsh but make it more transparent and then if you want to add effects we can go back to the effects option and maybe see if we can add a glow to it something that glows around the ooh that's quite the fat glow so if we don't want it to glow that much let's go ahead and maybe choose another preset that's not as huge of a glow or we can change the size of a glow by going down to something a little bit softer there and that's for the series, and if you want to just focus on the one, like let's say we want to focus on this guy right here, which is the month of July for MP3 sales, the one that made the most sales out of all the months here between books and MP3s. After you select it once, and it's got all the others selected, then go ahead and click on it again to isolate that and say, okay, I just want to focus on that one. Come back over here in the task pane, and pretty much anything you select over here in the chart is always going to have like a fill effects and then something proprietary to it in which case this is for the series options that when I click on it again you can toggle with the primary and secondary axis but I want to keep it simple and let's go back to the fill select a gradient fill well I don't want gradient fill we can do a solid fill something that really pops out and click the drop down arrow maybe a dark blue and something a little bit transparent so it kind of blends in with the rest but not too much but really stands out so after you click off of it you can say okay that one really takes the cake that one we want to focus on because we had the most success in sales for the month of July for our mp3s so again anything you select throughout the chart you look over here you're gonna get the fill you're gonna get the effect options and then something that's proprietary to that like this is for the size if I select the vertical axis again paint effects size and properties then access options and let's go over that actually but let's don't do it in that chart because that one's junked up let's go ahead and scroll down and select that chart here and do it for this let's go ahead and select the y axis and again you get the paint bucket so you can go ahead and color it you can give it special effects you can change the size and properties of it but i want to cover the access options and more specifically the number because maybe you want to take a look at the numbers over here and see if you can tweak it, like the currency. If you don't want it in currency, you want to click on the drop-down arrow, maybe do it in percentage, fraction, general number. Gets rid of the dollar signs, but let's go back to currency. Number of decimal places, the symbol. Instead of the dollar symbol, you can do the Russian ruple, or you can choose your negative numbers if you have any, if you want the format to be in red or parentheses. And then finally, the format code. So looking at the code, I don't know if you can see it, but you have the dollar symbol, so that's going to be displayed here. And then you've got the comma, which means it's going to put that every thousands. So there we go, right after the three numbers for 100,000. And then you have the pound symbols, or the number symbols, which is the digit placeholder. And we also have the zeros, and the zero is a digit placeholder too, but displays insignificant zeros if a number has fewer digits than there are zeros. In other words, when you look at the last two zeros here, if I have 90 cents, 90, 
the zero would be considered insignificant, so like in Excel it wouldn't normally display it. But if you want to see that insignificant zero because it's significant to you, then you want to add that insignificant zero placeholder. So you don't see 0.9, you can say, oh, it's 0 0.90 for 90 cents. So go ahead and customize it the way you'd like to see it. And we can add one more thing to it at the end. So the comma separates it by hundreds of thousands, but if you put a comma at the end of it, that can be used as a thousands separator. In other words, you can scale it back by multiples of thousands. So when you look at this, you're like, okay, that's too much space there, especially if you get into the millions or hundreds of millions. Right now, the hundreds of thousands, how about if we just go ahead and scale it back a thousand by adding a comma at the end and clicking on add. And so we can put a, an axis title over here that says this is in thousands after we scaled it back by adding a comma. So when we read it, well, let me put in the axis title. Let's come over here, click on plus. Let's do hover over that. Click on its triangle and say we just want the vertical axis title. And then double click really fast and say that's in thousands. And then go ahead and click off. And so with it selected, come over here again, the access options, expand the number. And because we tweaked it, now it's a custom category based upon this type with the format. Or you can click on the drop down arrow and choose another type. And we'll cover this in more detail in a later training video about advanced custom number formats. So you want to be sure to watch that so you can get more of a feel of how you can customize this, like if you want to add color to it. Like those negative numbers, you want to add it in red. Well, take a look at that training video, but I want to keep it simple here and show you how you can do some tweaks. And then other videos will help support what we've learned here and go into more detail about it. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos. And for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.